Oh. Show on the road. <laughs> I'm just gonna be bossy this morning. Make my husband happy. Start right at ten. Good morning. Merry Christmas, everyone. Joy to the world. Yes. Let us rejoice. Our Savior has come. Yes. Happy birthday, Jesus. Yes. Happy birthday, Eve, Jesus. <laughs> and even though it's just a day we pick on the calendar, right? It's just a day that we pick. It doesn't make it any less precious. And as everybody uh, hustles and bustles and gets ready for whether you've already had some, we already had our big Christmas yesterday, or whether you're getting ready, enjoy your time with your families. And... Uh, We, uh, we will start this morning with any uh, praises or prayer requests anybody would like to share. Yeah, any, Peter, did you have something? Well, uh, yeah, um, I would like to talk about myself, but uh, I have an issue. I posted this on Facebook a little bit about it. I'm up at work. I've got a project manager that's actually lying about myself and my boss both to my boss's boss. And instead of letting listening to my boss, which you would think she would, she listens to this project manager setting forth these lies. So it's it's impacting a lot of things. Um, I, I've also been told in no uncertain terms, you know, to expect probably to make less money this year, <coughs> this next year than I did last year, or this year, which was already a pay cut. So um, just a little bit, not sure what to do, need, need some wisdom. And I've also been told that because of this whole, the accounts that all that, these people opened a few years back. We're having to do more and more work on with more projects. So it's just it, it's just going crazy. I I need wisdom in what how to handle this because this is just getting to be too much. Okay. Prayer for truth. Yeah, go ahead. Sheila called us this morning and asked for prayer for that one. She made her fall. Oh, okay. 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 And my uh, middle daughter, no, my middle daughter's mother has had, I don't know if it was a tumor they found in her brain, or, but I know they were bleeding on the brain. She texted me yesterday and asked if it was a brain Okay. For Evelyn and for D. D. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, Tim. Um, I just want to testify and, and praise the Lord this morning yes. for Revelation for a phenomenal teaching because when you know who you are that's, um, it almost sounds yeah. I don't know the right conceited words. stuff uh, well it's but the more you know who you are exactly. the less you think about yourself because the less it is about yeah. you right. it's totally not about you right. so right. the more you know who you are the more everything falls into place yeah. and you just go about your day just being you by not thinking about you because you know who you are and so your words have meaning you're ministering you're talking you're revealing things to people when you're even unaware and i want to thank the lord for that because i've already had church this morning and all i did was just yeah. to my brothers <laughs> and, um and it wasn't preaching but we've already had church i mean yeah. god's so awesome yeah, yeah. Thank the lord. Amen. Amen. yeah peter yeah, I've got to praise also. So, um, again, so thankful for Mike for all of his help getting the truck fixed. I had to take it to the garage and have it, some other things done with it this week. I had the truck, and and I knew that my friend that, that I had asked for prayer for this, that went to Bible College and ministered, that he needed a word from Tom's name. Um, he, he didn't remember any of the word prophecies that Tom had given him, and Tom was actually somewhere close. It, it was only 60 miles away from the one, so... I, my truck was running. I was able to pick him up. I, you know, reviewed the freezing rain and everything. Didn't run into any problems there. Did run into a, a curve that wasn't correctly marked, and we almost went off the road, but the angels kept kept the truck back on the road. So I got him up there, recorded the, the word prophecy that Tom had, posted on YouTube, so he's got that. And it, it was awesome that it happened then, because then a day and a half later, the truck, truck stopped running again. So at least the truck was running, so I could at least get him the word from Tom's name and, and get back to him. Say, 
Praise the Lord. Yeah. I would praise the Lord too for uh, the other day. I don't know what day it was now. It was not a hectic week, but uh, some kid ran a stop sign mm-hmm. on the side road and clipped the tail end of my truck. And then it been, you know, a few seconds earlier, he decides to hit the sideways and about to flip the truck, but it just caught the tail end of it. It's not an ounce. So that's why you see a car out there with Florida plates. It's not some moron that doesn't know where it is. It's a rental car. But anyway, thank God it didn't do a whole lot of damage, but it doesn't do that. Praise the Lord. Yeah, John. You know, I, I'm thrilled because the scripture says those that bless Israel will yes. be blessed. Yes. So thank God yes. we've got a president yes. that recognized, and the whole world yeah. voted against him. Yeah. Yeah. You think that God's not in this whole right. thing? I don't know if he even realizes that mm-hmm. God's calling the shots. Right. He, but thank God mm-hmm. he's obedient. Yes. What the Spirit is leading him to, and uh, you know, I, and I love it the way Nikki Haley said, "We'll keep score. Yes. This will not go unchecked. Yeah. Right. We pay at least twenty-five percent all budget." And uh, I think I tell you what, if you wonder where we're at, just just look the paper, yeah. listen to the news. <laughs> I saw where one of the top generals has told his men, everybody under, prepare for war. Get your mindset. It's coming. We can't, we're not going to be able to get around it. We've tried every diplomatic. I think they're doing things diplomatically that we don't even know of. Yeah. And they're still hitting a, a cement wall. And uh, we know that uh, two, uh, you know, one third of mankind is going to go. But thank God, not a hair on our head. Right. And I don't have a whole lot of hair. <laughs> Because we're moving into a time sure. that you better believe. Yeah. Yes, amen. amen. It's going to drive many people out there that don't have the time of day. They will have yeah. the time of day. God yes, will find Jesus. all the lost sheep. And then yeah. this thing's over. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. I believe we're yeah. in the last generation. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was yeah. impressed. Um, I, I read something. Um, it was about the power of positivity or something like that. And it was about um, speaking like, you know, it's, it wasn't from a Christian perspective, but it's scriptural basis yeah. that what we speak, yeah. we get. Yeah. And it was all of these like famous people and influential people that were saying, um, Bill, um, Jim Carrey wrote himself a check for $10 million dollars. And he didn't date it, but he said, by Thanksgiving, 1995, yes. I will be able to cash this check to myself for $10 million. And he said, and I drove around for three years with that check in my wallet, and it deteriorated and deteriorated, but I never stopped believing that, it, that I would be able to cash that check. And a week before Thanksgiving, 1995, he found out he was going to get paid $10 million for Dumb and Dumber. Wow. All of that to say, our self-talk, that yes. we talk to ourselves is what comes out of our mouth. And we eat the fruit of the words that we speak. And there's two kinds of fruit, right? Good and evil and life. So let's feed ourselves life, the fruit from the tree of life, and let's speak the fruit from the tree of of life. I'm done eating the wicked fruit. I'm done consuming the wicked fruit. Let's just agree that everything in and everything out is life. Yes. And that more abundantly Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because yes. yes. yeah. I can't help but think on, as the days are shorter, the words we speak are so much more important. So much more important. And we don't even understand sometimes the power and the magnitude and the ripple effect of those words that keep going and going. Anyone else this morning? Any prayer requests? Yeah, Tim. Yes, God heal all that relationship. I mean, that, I mean, you know, sometimes you just know 
as no other uh, situation could have been straightened out except that God was in it. And you know only God. And you just have to lift your hands up and your heart up to Him. And, and then I lost my sister this year, but I'm so thankful that we was able to go down, you know, and say goodbyes. And that what was, um, Alita and I was in there at, in, in the hospital room, and um, it got really quiet and went up. And sometimes it's good to just tell them how much you love and then to tell them sorry to go. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. Remember the machine? And the machine just, as soon as that, she likes to breathe, like a sigh of relief that, you know, mm -hmm. her kids had came and her little brother came and just tell her how much you love her. And the machine changed. And then uh, that day she passed away that night. Mm -hmm. So I was just thankful for the opportunity to say. And that's what the Lord taught me this year. Say what you need to say yeah. to those you love. Don't wait because mm -hmm. we don't know if they're going to be there next year. Amen. 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 Yeah, Peter. Uh, testimony and, and her request. So my friend David that started coming here when, when they were in town back in Arizona. They were here Wednesday night. Uh, he's, he left this morning. He's going to spend Christmas with his daughter for the first time in 20 some odd years. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a, it was a bad situation. The, their mom took them, she'd been having an affair with them, and the, the guy she married didn't want them to have anything to do with her dad. So, you know, so thankful that he gets to spend Christmas with his daughter, but also prayer because his two sons haven't reconciled yet to him, and so, you know, they, they need to reconcile with him also. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Restoration. All right, let's stand and go to the Lord this morning. Oh, Lord. Oh, we love you so much. We're so thankful, Lord. As we celebrate this time or this season where you came and you changed the story. You changed the destiny for all of humanity, Lord. You came, Lord, knowing the price that you would pay. You came anyway and humbled yourself, took on flesh, and walked among us, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord, that you finished the work that you came to do, Lord. You finished the work that your Father sent you to do, Lord. And by your sacrifice, Lord, by the life that you now live seated at the right hand of the Father. You have given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. For those that need healing this morning, Evelyn and Dee, for those that need restoration, Lord, for, for Peter's friend, for the families that need reconciliation and restoration, Lord, bring the children back into the fold and bring the Father the mothers, like reconciliation, bind those gaps of hurt and misunderstanding, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have finished the work, that now we just simply walk in it, Lord. Give your people words of life, that we speak in and listen and speak to ourselves words of life. And then we speak out into this world words of life, peace, love, and joy in the Holy Ghost surround us. And Jesus, as so we gather together to lift up your name, we come close to worship and adore you, Lord. It's worship and, and gather and bask in your presence, Lord. Come today and meet with us as we lift up a sacrifice of praise, Lord. As we gather in this house, this house of prayer, in the name of Jesus, life in that abundantly for all those gathered today, in Jesus' name. Jesus name just reminded that he is the God of more than enough so whatever it is that you need whatever it is that you that you have lack he is the God of more than enough so amen just a reminder if you brought a cell phone today please turn it off
New Year's Eve. Uh, anybody that would like to gather next Sunday night, we're going to have a game night. I know that we had done that a few years ago. That was a lot of fun. So anybody, um, let's pick a time. Seven? Six? Seven? Sue seven. Seven. Seven p.m. Sunday night. You hear me have that whole discussion with myself? <laughs> I get a little taste of what Michael lives with. <laughs> seven, six, seven, six. I don't know. Seven o'clock p.m. So anybody that wants to come have some fellowship, doesn't have plans for New Year's Eve, I don't know if we'll make it till midnight. We'll see. I don't usually make it till midnight, but um, come gather. We'll bring some treats and um, maybe uh, some movies or, and just games and have some fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. And then in January, Eastern Gate House of Prayer. Um, years ago, uh, the Lord had given me a mandate for governmental uh, intercession uh, to stand in the gap for this land in Israel. And uh, Cindy Jacobs and her husband Mike were here in town, I'm going to say eight or nine years ago. And I don't know if many of you know who uh, Cindy Jacobs is, but she uh, is a leader, one of the leaders of generals and intercessions intercessors out in uh, Colorado and uh, we met one her Cindy and I met up with Cindy and her husband Mike and we had a little joke about that and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, we were getting ready to leave and uh, she turns around and she goes you have governmental on you which governmental so it was an affirmation from some lady who I had never met before who might follow her ministry off to the side not directly under but off to the side and, and appreciate some of the word and wisdom and knowledge she has. So I accepted that situation. So I'll tell Eastern Gate House of Prayer and those who are part of this gathering, if the Eastern Gate House of Prayer is not just the worship team, it's this body. Yes, it is. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Don't tell me this day that what has transpired in this land with the president that is there now and how the situation with Israel, don't think that this house of prayer had anything not to do with this. Right. Okay? We are shifting. That's coming out of the heart of this nation. Yeah, We're facing yeah. the east. We are in a governmental situation. Yeah. So I don't take lightly this ministry. And I know at times there's a lot of people here and sometimes there's not. That's not the point. The Lord says, will you stand in the gap? Yes. And I thank my brothers and sisters who have faithfully stood in the gap. Was it five years now? Yeah. Most houses of prayer would have folded up and, and put everything in the yeah. storage area and went yeah. away. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to go away. We're not going to go away. Amen. Okay? Amen. We've just started pushing back. We just started the wall start to crumble in the Jericho situation. <laughs> and it's it, it's time to push all the way through. Many times say, okay, the walls have fell flat. And da, da, da. No, we know we can go in. We need to occupy it. We need to take the land. Yes. Take yes. back what is rightfully ours. Yes. And not only when you do this for the land of Israel. He said, as I bless, as you bless Israel, you will also be yes. blessed. Amen. And the, those situations, as you're taking the situation, Situation care of in Israel and stuff like that. The situations or the walls that you're facing home in your personal life and personal situations, those yes. walls are going to fall on yes. It's a domino effect. If you not yeah. build those walls, yes. those other walls behind it are just going to start flattening out. Yes. Okay, Amen. time to occupy. Yes. We're not backing off 2018. Amen. Yeah, we're rolling. Amen. 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 And uh, January 26th, Winter Jam. <coughs> You girls have anything to say about this? You going? You're going? Okay. And all the other young adults who are going? <laughs> the <right>. youths. <laughs> um, if we got to get a, a, a minivan or a bus or whatever else, I don't care. I get a CDL. I can drive a, a Greyhound bus. <laughs> Great. so, okay. so I'm ready. Uh, we're licensed, and the Lord has given authorization, and we pray for hundreds and thousands of youth and adults to give their hearts to the yes. Lord in this yes. situation, yes. this area. Yes. Uh, it's, time. it's a pretty fantastic concert for $15. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Great. And, and it usually if, sells out every year. If you don't have funds, they will be provided. Yeah. If you don't have the money to go, you come see me. All right? Yeah. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. All right, Don and Toby, do you want to come take an offering this morning? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here today, Lord. We just, we're excited with what the new year is going to hold, what this day holds. Lord, we just <clears throat> want to thank you for all that you've done for us this year. 
We pray that this will be a great day. We will celebrate your coming into this world the first time. And Father, we hope to be celebrating your coming into this world the second time in our lifetime. We just praise your mighty name. Father, we pray that you set us on fire. Yes. Set us on fire. Yes. And Lord, open our eyes to yes. what's going on yes. in the world, yes. where we're at. And Father, we just pray that as, these, as the enemy struggles to maintain his control, yes. it begins to fall yes. aside. Yes. Because as Mike said, as we have stood as a nation and blessed yes. Israel, you said, your word says that yes. you will bless this nation. Yes, yes. We call for revival. Yes. We yes. call to go back to the things that made us a great nation. Yes. The things that we were founded on. Yes. That you were the principal, the cornerstone yes. of this nation. Thank you, God. All things, you are the cornerstone. Yes. We just praise your name. Yes. Bless this offering, yes. Father. Yes. Bless each and every one here today. And will not fail to give you all honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship team will come forth.
Jesus, we love you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you this morning, Lord. We celebrate your humanity that has given us spirit life. You shed your godhood to come to this earth as a human, to live as we live, but without sin, that we might have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for the greatest gift that has ever been imagined or conceived. And it was freely given to us. And we give you such thanks this morning, Lord, that every day we celebrate that gift of life everlasting. In Jesus' name, everybody said praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mike. Worship team, that was beautiful. It really was. Praise the Lord. Excellent, all of you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Merry Christmas to everybody. Appreciate you all being here this morning. And uh, I want to take a moment to thank uh, Tim for preaching last Sunday. He did a great job. And uh, then Jody, uh, Wednesday night as well, did, a, did an excellent job. And I really appreciate them stepping up and, and uh, taking care of that for me. Praise God. And I know that uh, those of you that were here were blessed. So praise God. God is good, isn't he? Amen. <coughs> Usually it takes longer for everybody to leave, but I haven't had a whole lot to say yet. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. God is good, isn't He? Hallelujah. Everybody's getting ready. We had our, was it our first Christmas? I've already forgotten. Uh, our first one of the year uh, last night with part of the grandkids, and that's always pretty exciting, praise the Lord, for them especially, but it's fun, obviously, when because they're, they're the youngest ones and they're the ones that you have the most fun with because it's all new and every everything is exciting and so praise God. That is good, Amen. Well, I want to uh, talk to you about a few things this morning, and you know, it's, there's there's odd things that I I suppose everybody thinks of, but I know I do, and uh, one of them I was thinking about this week. I I heard the song. I hadn't heard it for a while, but it's a old Eric Clapton song, and he says, "You look wonderful tonight." You know, she said, "Do I look all right?" And he said, "Yeah, you, my darling, you look wonderful tonight." And I was wondering if Eric really thought she looked wonderful, or if it was like the 27th outfit she had tried on, and he just didn't want to be late to the party. You know, like, yeah, that's great. I've done that shopping with my wife. That's beautiful. That's the one. That is it. You want? You got to have that one. Praise the Lord. So. And uh, so that kind of was rolling around in my mind. And I don't know, you may not realize this, but I wrote a song. Uh, it was a song about tortilla. Well, actually, it was more of a rap. So. Nice. Uh, well, I, praise the Lord. I'm not giving up on that backup plan just in case, praise the Lord. So, But, you know, this kind of weird uh, way... The, and it's actually kind of a theme to the message this morning, but I'll just say it like this. I, I believed in Santa, then I didn't believe in Santa, then I became Santa, and now I look like Santa. <laughs> so, so uh, okay, man. It, it'll, you're going to experience it sooner or later. Eventually it'll come to you, praise the Lord. So God is good, amen, and, and we do want to celebrate the Lord. I, I, I don't intend to be uh, lengthy this morning, but who knows, praise the Lord. But I, want, I know it's Christmas Eve, time to be with family, but we do want to celebrate the Lord and, and certainly want to let uh, the Lord know how much we appreciate all that He's done for us, amen, and, and all that He continues to do. So 
With that in mind, I want to begin, uh, Roberto, uh, with Isaiah chapter 9 and verses 6 and 7. Isaiah 9 and verses 6 and 7. And this is prophecy. It's, it's prophetic, right? Isaiah was prophesying of the eventual coming of the Lord, the birth of the Lord. For he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And then Matthew chapter 1 uh, verses 23 through 25 is the fulfillment of this. It's the manifestation of this prophetic word. And so behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel and which being interpreted as God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth his, her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So there's the fulfillment. And then there's Revelation. And I want to speak just a moment about that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Praise God. You know, uh, I, I'm, I expect this is true for everybody, but I know at our house there's never any unwrapped presents under the tree after Christmas. <laughs> It's like you don't just leave them hanging around there, you know, for nothing. So I want to talk to you this morning about unwrapping Jesus or the unveiling of Jesus. And that is a multifaceted reality. He is, in fact, the ever coming one. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. I know we celebrate this once a year, but he's ever coming. Praise the Lord. And so in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now, I, I believe for sure in a future coming of Jesus, just as I believe emphatically in the historic fact of his birth. Amen. But there's a present reality of his appearing as well. And I think that's what Jesus would like us really to focus on. Amen. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So I'm looking for the appearing right here right now yes. in our midst yes. praise the lord otherwise we're, we're we're making it a one day a year event or some future event that we don't know when but this is what jesus is really interested in i'm not looking back there in a manger nor am i looking out there for some atmospheric cloud though i know them both to be a reality praise the lord i'm looking for christ appearing in his temple yes. praise god first corinthians chapter 3 in verse 16 Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. Ephesians 2, 20 through 22. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence 
before him. Praise the Lord. Now, if you can look at this with revelation eyes, you're going to see that you are the temple where the Lord resides. Praise God. Because God has taken up his abode within you, then all the earth, all the carnality, all the flesh, all the dust, all of Adam's dominion has to shut up and keep silent before him. Sickness has to close its mouth. Hallelujah. Lack has to shut up. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, uh, bondage has to just shut its mouth and let you be. Hallelujah. Praise God. God will rise within his holy habitation. Amen. And temporal distractions will have to keep silent. All the things that try to grab our attention throughout the year, our, our flesh, our bodies, our, our, our finances, our issues, all of those things have to shut up before the presence of the Lord. He has come to his holy temple. Amen. Let all the carnality let all of the world keep silent hallelujah before the Lord praise God so I want us to focus our eyes not on a babe in a manger not only on the future returning king but let's look at the present reality of his coming praise God if we let God arise in our midst the earth will keep silent and God's enemies will be scattered praise the Lord we don't have to do anything but let him appear let him arise praise God and watch the earth shut up praise God amen we saw an example we're talking about uh, Israel being or Jerusalem being acknowledged by the United States as the capital the whole world is in a turmoil over this. They're ranting and raving. The same ones we're sending money to every year after year. Our money, by the way, the government doesn't just have this in a you know, box someplace. It's taken our money and given it to these countries who hate us and who hate Israel. And I love what Nikki Haley said. We're keeping track. And when you come with your hand out the next time, you may get a open hand from us with a slap across the face. It just says, now go on your way. Yeah. Find your money someplace else. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Let, let's look at the present reality of his coming. Right. Praise God. Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Thank you, Jesus. Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the, praise the Lord. Amen. What, what if you're the temple through which humanity is going to see the manifestation of God's presence, the unwrapping of this gift, the unveiling, praise the Lord, of Jesus? Glory to God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. The he to be revealed is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Revelation is about what it takes to produce this mysterious unveiling. This unwrapping and revealing of God's gift to humanity. Praise the Lord. It's about what it takes to produce Christ's appearing and what's holding him back. Amen. How many of you know there's nothing too big for God? Nothing can hold back God but those who have him resident in them. Not the devil, not the Antichrist, not some other force, only us. If Mary hadn't said, be it unto me, even as you said, we'd still be in our sin and lost. Somebody had to say, I'll, I'll, I'll let him come through me. I'll, I'll reveal him, praise the Lord. So Revelation is about God's plan of redemption. It's about restoration. It's about God putting us into our original state. Restoring everything that fell into corruption and decay. Thank God. He didn't put an angel at the east of the garden with a flaming sword to keep us out of the garden of God. He put him there, the Bible says, to keep the way of the tree of life. Amen. I don't know about your house, but at my house, the tree is where the gifts are. Amen. Look at John 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Yeah. What way? The way back to the tree of life yes. that the angels guard. That way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father 
except by Him. Praise the Lord. This is the way back to the garden, back to paradise, back to where we have a restored relationship with God, back to where we were before we were born, back to where we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord. You can invite a manifestation of Jesus right into your present situation. You can. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the ever coming one. And I, I appreciate prayer requests. And I appreciate praying with people and praying for people and having them pray for me. But I'm telling you, it's come to the time where we need to be growing up, amen, and start becoming the manifestation instead of looking for a manifestation. Hallelujah. That's what's going to happen in these last days. To see the last days be what the last days are declared to be, somebody has got to rise up and be a revelation, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ. Praise God. It's incomplete to refer to just a first and a second coming. Praise God. There are many comings of the Lord in Scripture. He appears to Mary at the tomb. He appears to the disciples in the upper room. He appears to over 500 in the days before His ascension. Praise the Lord. He appears to the Apostle Paul. Amen. He appears to John on the, on the Isle of Patmos. Amen. We need to emphasize the appearing of Jesus today. Not as a historic event. Not as something off in the far distant future. But something that people can experience right this moment. Amen. Christmas can come every day. Christ can be born into people's lives every day. Amen of the year. To everybody and to anybody who will receive the gift. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 8. I am the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He is the ever coming one. Praise the Lord. Unto us is born this day. Every day. This day. God is a right now God. It's always this day with God. Hallelujah. And this day, praise the Lord, is born unto us. Christ the King. And He can be born to anybody this day. Every day. Hallelujah. Paul had a revelation of Jesus. And that revelation of Jesus to Paul produced in him an unveiling of Jesus in his life. Invite a manifestation of Jesus right now into your present situation. Into your crisis. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 2 verses 13 through 15. At some point church we have to quit being, having church and start being church. Praise the Lord. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. He is the light of the world. We have become lights to the world. We have become the the potential of God being revealed in this earth. The potential for the light of the knowledge of the glory of God to be revealed. Hallelujah to this earth. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Now, I want you to notice this. We look at this all the time, but kind of in an ethereal way rather than a natural. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses... Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The cloud is people. Praise the Lord. Look at Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to the windows? Jesus comes in. We read the scripture. He's coming in the clouds. Amen. He comes in and with the clouds who are in reality us. Yes. Believers. Not just in some future event. But every day of our life. As born again people. As the clouds of God. He, he rides us like chariots. Yes. We are the vehicle. Are we not? We talk about it all the time. This flesh is just nothing but a ride for God. It's just a means for which God has to operate in this earth. Praise the Lord. Look at uh, Psalms chapter 104 verse 3. And I'm about to wrap up here, but praise the Lord. I hope we're thinking 
as we really are spiritually not just in the natural all the time praise the Lord who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters and who makes the clouds his chariot praise the Lord who makes the people his vehicle hallelujah who makes the clouds his chariot and who walk who the makes the clouds his chariot who walked upon the wings of the wind see he's revealed in the midst of the clouds his people yes. people that are moved by the wind of the Holy Spirit yes. praise God it's Christmas every time we reveal Jesus in this world yes. be the gift that keeps on giving yes. be a revelation of Jesus Christ yes. be Christmas don't just have Christmas. Be Christmas. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. When you celebrate with your family and loved ones, just think about that tree. I know I, there was a time when I was told that that was idolatry. Having a tree was, you know, evil and pagan and all this kind of stuff. Okay, well, if you want to believe that, that's fine. But I'm telling you, there is... There is a, a revelation of Jesus in everything in this earth. Even the things that we think are screwed up, God can reveal himself in. Hallelujah. He is the way to the tree of life. He's the gifts that are under the tree. He's everything there is about Christmas. And he's given us the privilege, amen, of being Christmas to this world every single day. Something to celebrate. Our lives are something to celebrate every day in Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Celebrate yes. the birth of Christ in you. Yes. Not only tomorrow, but every day of your life. Be the gift that really does keep on giving. Yes. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a very Merry Christmas. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here this morning. Go in the power and the anointing of that Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Be a chariot. Yes. Take the Lord someplace today. Yes. Praise God. You're dismissed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. I just messed up everybody in the Sunday school department, so that was my gift to them. You can't be done. We haven't had snacks. Merry Christmas, Rick.